I will call to order the uh, town council meeting, May 9th, 2016. Item one on the agenda, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item two on the agenda is public comment. Mr. Bear, anybody signed up? Someone has signed up, Mr. Bear. Okay, anybody for public comment? Hearing none, we'll close that and move to item three. Um, and this is a fun one. We have a proclamation tonight for uh, Miss Sue Ford, our um, public librarian's children's services librarian, winner of the 2016 Faith Hectoen Award given by the children's section of the Connecticut Library Association. Um, why don't you, Mary Jane, would you like to read the proclamation? It's a little bit long. Sure. Huh? <laughs> Sue certainly earned it, so why not? Right. Whereas the Faith Heck Heck Twin Award is given annually by the Children's Section of the Connecticut Library Association to recognize the efforts of an individual or group that has made an impact on library services to children in Connecticut at the local, regional, or state level. Developed in 1979, the award is named for Faith Heck Twin, who served for over 20 years as the first state consultant for children's services. And whereas Sue A. Ford, New Milford Public Library's Children's Service Librarian has made a lasting impact on two generations of New Milford children and is one of the reasons the children's program is th thriving. Sue started at New Milford in a part-time position in the spring of 1980. She made a tour of all the departments before landing her first full-time job as the tech services librarian. She became the children's librarian in 1987 and... You know, I'm going to interrupt you. Maybe since everybody's, um, there's, there's a couple of paragraphs, if everybody could kind of read a paragraph and pass right, it around. Sure. Maybe so, spit. Right so. sure. Share the wealth. Whereas the library has been full of laughter and fun as Sue devised innovative programs to bring a love of reading to each child. Who else would think of having a shooting contest into a mini toilet to celebrate <laughs> Captain Underpants? <laughs> Who else has a pink party to reflect Pinkalicious? And whereas you took part in the community conversation on early childhood for Bridgewater and Lakewood Roxbury in Washington, Connecticut, in order to determine the literacy needs for pre kindergartners, this led to the development of the local early childhood council, which consists of teachers, daycare providers, Head Start herself, and parents. In the same vein, she serves on the Education Center Board at the New Milford United Church, and... Whereas, an avid knitter, Sue has an impact on adults too. She began a weekly knitting club called uh, Knitwits. <laughs> <laughs> mm. This is a support group for knitters of all ages who knit together, solve knitting problems, and socialize. Sue has reached outside New Milford as well by serving as an adjunct professor of children's literature at Northwestern Community College and teaching an adult literature as an adjunct at Southern Connecticut State University. In addition, she has served twice as interim director of New Milford Public Library while also performing all the duties of the children's library. And Jessica, I don't want you to get robbed. If you want to read that last part, you can. <laughs> I just say the tape run by the mayor. <laughs> All right, well, now therefore, I, David R. Grunbach, do hereby express the gratitude of the town of New Milford in recognizing Sue A. Ford as the 2016 winner of the Faith Hectoen Award. And I'll entertain a motion to, um, to, to issue this proclamation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations, Ms. Ford. Thank you. 
All right. So, item four on the agenda is approval of the prior minutes. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Item six on the agenda is appointments and reappointments to five. boards and com Oh, excuse me. Ah, uh, five. Mayor's comments. Thank you. I almost forgot. I do have a couple today. Um, so I did want to congratulate um, Sue Ford and give a couple of updates on some things that are going on around town. I wanted to... Um, thank the VFW and the American Legion for the work that they have been doing to prepare and organize the Memorial Day Parade. They have um, done it for many years and uh, I do want to express my appreciation and that on behalf of the town also for everything that they have done. And I especially want to thank um, Walter Bowden. Um, he's an individual that, that came to my office and you made a great suggestion about uh, putting a flag on Veterans Bridge. So we've been working with Public Works to get permission from the department, uh, or from the state. My idea is to put a, a, a big flag in between kind of the, um, the rafters in the middle of the bridge. Um, it might take a little while and, and we're not sure we could get it done before Memorial Day, but we're certainly working on it. So I want to thank Mr. Bowden for that suggestion and it definitely is a good one. Nice. Um, I'll give a brief update on the um, donation kind of clean out sale at JPS this past weekend. I want to thank Mark Mankin and the youth agency and the many volunteers that were involved in organizing that. It was a tremendous amount of work. Apparently about 50% of the leftover material um, in the school was, um, was taken by uh, and disposed of to people that could, you know, were interested in using it. They raised approximately $1,030 uh, $1, in donations, and that will go to support the grad party at the end of the year. So um, I, I really want to extend my uh, heartfelt thanks to the youth agency and everybody that did come out and donate and, uh, and support that. And on another note, um, just to give the council an update, personnel interviews uh, for the uh, director of personnel have been ongoing and uh, we got a lot of qualified candidates and I expect to make a, a recommendation in the coming weeks and update you guys on how that's going. Um, and uh, aside from that, the referendum is scheduled for May 24th and uh, the town budget meeting is tomorrow. So. That concludes my comments. We will move on to item number six, which is appointments and reappointments to boards and commissions. Um, Mary Jane. Okay. Um, move the um, Bike and Trail Committee um, Temporary Committee and um, members are Tom O'Brien, Democrat for the term 5-9-2016 to 11-30-2016, Lisa Arison, an affiliated 5-9-2016 to 11-30-2016, Mary Jane Lundgren, Democrat, 5 9 2016 to 11 30 2016 and James R. McKeon, Republican, 5 9 2016 to 11 30 2016. Second. Okay. Any uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very well. Motion carries. Thank you. Item B on the agenda is reappointments to the following, and that's Parks and Recreation. Okay. Move the reappointment um, to Parks and Rec's William C. Camp, unaffiliated. Uh, for the term 12 1 2015 to 11 30 2019. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. And move the reappointment to the Library Board of Trustees, Rosemary L. Kelly, Republican, 11 1 2016 to 12 31 2020. It looks like it was 1 1 2016. 1 1. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe. That's okay. Second. Uh, uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Thank you. The motion carries. So item seven is a um, regarding the Veterans Committee, and it's the with regard to the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to close a number of the roads. Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Harrybrook Park. 
Do you want me to move sure. That? Um, move the um, closure of Grove Street from Frank's Lane to Lover's Leap State Park for the 2016 inaugural Harry Harry Brook Hog Wild Hustle, a five. Can you say that again? <laughs> Hog Wild Hustle. <laughs> say it three times fast. A um, five mile trail run and obstacle course through Harry Brook Park and Lover's Leap State Park on July 9, 2016, beginning at 10 a.m. and ending at approximately 12 noon. The road will only be closed as needed, and there will be a police officer there to direct traffic. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, yes, just sir. a friendly amendment. That was a 5K. A 5K. 5K. Yes. They do some 5K, 5 miles. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Sorry. All in favor of the, I just want to say this, Harry Brook Hog Wild Hustle. <laughs> say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item nine on the agenda regards the Children's Center. This is uh, a request for authorization. We've gotten amended uh, contractual instruments with the state's um, Office of Early Childhood for Child Daycare Programming. And as you know, the money from the state kind of is run through the, the town and then it's dispersed to the Children's Center. And this um, contract memorializes that and sets forth the terms. Oh. Okay. Sure. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Youth agency. It's always nice to accept a donation. Okay. Sure. Um, move to accept a donation of $6,000 from the Ellen Knowles Harco Harcourt Foundation Incorporated and a $500 donation from the Friends of Sullivan Farm. Funds will be utilized for installing a new garden fence to thwart deer, deer. <laughs> deer, <laughs> deer maintenance on the water system, restaining the barn, and repairing equipment used in vegetable production at the farm. These funds should be placed in revenue account 10441900-44118, which also uh, which will also necessitate expanding expense account 10441900-58923 in the amount of $6,500. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. And thank you to the foundation. We'll be sure to send out a thank you letter to them as well. Uh, item 11 on the agenda is HRRR, HRRA. Uh, the Housatonic Resources Recovery Agency and uh, the entering into a contract with New Tech, which was awarded by HRRA, of which New Milford is a part. Uh, I'm going to a motion. Motion to authorize Mayor David R. Gronbach to sign and enter into a contract with New Tech International in conjunction with HRRA to provide certain e waste recycling services set forth in the e waste collection and recycling agreement. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Um, item 12 on the agenda, Candlewood Lake Authority. And this is a, an agreement that we previously entered into. Uh, it's a vegetated buffer acceleration agreement. Um, and apparently what this did, does is move up the time frame to um, to install these vegetated buffers from five years to three years. So, uh, um, uh, any further discussion? I think everybody kind of understands that this is one step in maintaining the health of our lake and the, um, addressing some of the runoff and stormwater issues that um, really have a detrimental effect on the quality of the lake. So, uh, this is a good program for us to definitely accelerate rather than put off. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 13, I believe, is... Uh, so, we need a motion to go into executive section? Yes. And Second. who, uh, including John Tower. Um, anybody else? Kathy Conway. Ka oh. oh, Kathy, Kathy Conway. Conway. Okay, very good. So, there's a motion on the floor to... Executive session, section, executive second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll be out shortly. So We're back in open session and uh, entertain a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to authorize a resolution that was discussed in executive session in regard to Finnegan versus Town and Milford. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Tower and Ms. Conway, for your work on this matter. Uh, moving on to item 14, the Board of Education. This is a discussion and possible action on request to have the Board of Education year in balance of 237-262 uh, deposited into the Board of Ed's Capital Reserve Account. I entertain a motion. Okay. Second. Uh, any further discussion? You guys are very familiar with the accounts. It's what the Board of Ed uses to fund their kind of capital projects. And this is actually last year's surplus. So we're not sure what this year's surplus will be, but that'll be a discussion as well. So any further discussion on the Board of Ed um, issue? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Josh, I, I, did you want to speak at all? I'm sorry. You know, I know you were here. Just here in case you had any questions. Okay. Thank you. Nobody had any questions for Josh, did they? I should have asked. Okay. Now these guys are, they're, they're pros. Uh, item 15, the turf fields. I see Mr. Filer in the office, in, in the uh, audience. Good evening, Joseph Fell, Simply Cobbleway, New Milford. And with me is our representative from BSC Group, Eric uh, Russell. Uh, we uh, are getting to the uh, end of the project. We're, we're anticipating the turf being delivered this week. We think it'll be literally uh, on location this week, and then it, it's approximately Three weeks per field to install it so as they start installing the main field. Then the main Excuse field. me one second, Mr. Fryla. I don't mean to interrupt you. Robin, did we have uh, those handouts for everybody? All right. I'm okay. just going to have her pass this out so it makes your explanation a little bit easier when we get to the change order requests. Yeah. Which is good because I just realized I need reading glasses. Yeah. All right. Then I need a. Because it's getting hard to see what I have. I'm sorry. Please continue. So. That's how close we are. We are we're anticipating the end of June uh, at this phase. If you've been by the schools, you'll see how much project uh, of the work has been done. The north field, or, or the main field, I'm sorry, is uh, all set. It's all level, all the gravel's in. It's just literally waiting for the uh, artificial turf to be installed on it. And the north field, uh, that is one of the things that we had a change order for because uh, we need to level out some additional um, soil and uh, that is only days away if they haven't been working on it in the last couple of days uh, from that from where that belongs. I don't know if you've seen all the uh, light poles are in for the fields and uh, all the fence poles are up, not all the fence poles are up yet because we're still working in that area. The uh, track uh what when they started to take a good look at the pavement of it it was much deeper in pavement than we thought it runs anywhere from four to six inches so to remove all that pavement would have cost too much money so what they did is they went ahead and milled it down additionally and they're going to put new paving on top of it and then the rubber track will go on top of that the track will be one of the last things installed one, they have to have access to fields, and two, there's a set of circumstances that have to exist for that surface to be poured. It has to be dry, and no precipitation for X amount of days. It has to be X temperature outside for so many days in a row. It's, it's, mm -hmm. That's the only thing that could be delayed. It's a completely dependent on, on perfect weather conditions for that portion of it. Uh, so there was an additional cost for some of that milling that we just didn't realize it was that thick because we couldn't bore through the original uh, while the original track was still on it. The uh, other uh, change orders come up is because we have the new LED system, those lights are very focused directly onto the tracks. And the one thing that was uh, put to the side for the time being was the pedestrian walkway. As we know, the pedestrian walkway between the two fields, it was lit completely by you know, wash of light from the main fields. Well, there's no more wash of lights because the light is so directed now with the new LED system that the, the walkway would be pretty dark. And it's a safety issue across the board. 
Um, so we received pricing, uh, a variety of pricing on, on lighting for that and found that the, the, the most efficient and least expensive would be these new 16 foot poles that will be installed along that area. And that will come to approximately 28,000. Now, that is still pending zoning. So because we're installing these poles, uh, it's still pending zoning. And the reason that this was held off on was the former administration had asked us not to put that in their budget at that time. And then as we started to progress, we realized that this item is just not there. It needs to be done because it needs solely because of the safety issue. Um, on the water line, uh, there's been a lot of conversation. As you know, this committee is comprised of a lot of uh, individuals from the construction industry. Plus, we have our representatives from BSC Group, and this was looked at as discussed with the Quarterman. Um, the cost of moving that line, it can be done at any time after the project is done, actually, because it would only be sealing what's there and moved out. But the expected cost would be almost $100,000. And we did not believe it was worth doing that to move that line. Uh, then there was discussion about moving the, the one valve that comes up to the edge of the track near the visitor's bleachers. And that's one of the valves that runs to the high school. Now that valve is always left in an open position. It's never closed. And that's not the valve that leaked. It's a little valve further down off the field where the leak was that they repaired. So <coughs> Aquarian was of the opinion that you are better off leaving that one valve alone in the open position. If they come in and tap into the water main and replace the segment there to put a valve further out toward the, the driveway, they said, now you're risking a failure at two possible places off the main line. It's not worth the risk. Um, if, if that valve was ever, to, if that location was ever to leak, it can be shut down pretty quickly on either end of the field. So the overall from Aquarian and all the things was to just leave well enough alone. They don't anticipate any problems whatsoever. Um, the, the, the other point that has come up, um, when we were working on this project and the schools were very involved with us, uh, they came to us because H.I. Uh, Stone, our contractor, is on site and wanted to know if H.I. Stone would be interesting in bringing the sidewalks going to the remaining athletic fields, the baseball fields and so on, up to ADA, ADA compliance. They've been put on notice that they have to be brought up to ADA, ADA compliance. It was um, so creative thinking to say, we have these contractors on site now. What would it cost for them to do the project? Because two things, we had an estimate from BSC Group as to their consulting, it should that project, those sidewalks, go out to bid, um, that uh, their estimate was approximately $27,000 worth of work. They informed us they can reduce that bill by $10,000 if we do it in the project. <coughs> and H.I. Stone gave us a better price on getting those sidewalks completed because they were there. Their court was there, they're there, they would be more led to do the project uh, while they're there. So. Uh, we met with the mayor, uh, Mr. Bass, and myself, and Mr. Wargo, and uh, we were all of the opinion that they're there. If we can put it into our project as a change order, um, it would it would be done right now, and it would save a tremendous amount of money across the board for the town and the Board of Education. My understanding is the Board of Education, I have to know some of those folks are here, has a line item in their current budget for these sidewalks. So they're uh, willing to reimburse the town and we leave the financial end of it to those who know that best. But we all thought it was the best idea to encompass it in here, save some a lot of money on the project across the board. Um, I believe that covers everything that we have going at this time. There are it's four more, it's three more change orders. Uh, the school, it's ADA sidewalks, the additional um, fill for uh, the north field, the track milling uh, for the little additional depth, and the lights down the sidewalk. 
brings the total cost right now to three thousand three thousand. Three million six hundred seventy-nine thousand five hundred eighty-eight dollars fifty-six cents. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Father. I had in in my summary the valve, the five thousand dollars for the valve at the water line. Was that not approved, or should that not be on there? When we were looking at the breakdown that you provided, we included that as well. That's not necessary. Okay. That's not necessary. Uh, so that's off. Okay. Uh, Aquarians. Okay. And the drainage structure at Home Bleacher, eight hundred dollars. Is that something that needed to be? That's an anticipated price. We don't actually have pricing from the contractor on that yet. Okay. All right. We, we will say uh, HI Stone has been a good partner in this project. And some things they have actually picked up the cost for themselves. Um, and those would be um, the disc circle uh, for, for the discus, which is now off, off that area uh, of the field. Um, They've had to address some elevation issues with the goalposts and a netting for the discus throughout. Um, they've put that in um, as, as a courtesy uh, on the project. So that's where we are at this point. Uh, if we uh, all goes well, we'll be in the June. We will be looking at It's an amazing place. I, and I'll say this one other point. Um, my daughter's uh, a freshman at, at New Milford. Um, she does not play outdoor sports, as many of you know, she's a pretty skater. So, <laughs> so with her nice arena here, she <laughs> that. But um, she tells me, and, and, and all the students tell us, and the athletic directors, uh, the, the students are getting excited. Uh, if you go by, I mean, those new light poles are like, they're big. And um, so they see that, they see the fencing, they see that everything is, getting graded nicely. Um, so everybody's free to, everybody but the seniors are excited. <laughs> They'll be graduating before we finish up. So Joe, what's the total for the change orders now? What's um, the total? The without the valve, the water valve, and without the... Um, the total change orders are... The last one. Six one oh five to eighty nine ninety nine. Yeah. And the eight hundred, I think. Yeah, without the five thousand, without the eight hundred, we're at three million six hundred seventy nine thousand five hundred eighty eight fifty six. So, but what's the total of the change order? So it's one oh five. One oh five zero eight nine dot nine. Thank you. Thank you. Right. About to add that up. Yeah. No. Uh, Ms. Francis, I have a question. Um, I just have a question, Joe. The, um, back to the valve. Um, I understand they said they leave the valve as is and moving, in other words, tapping it off and moving it away from the field is hard to brand yourself. But I just have one question that leave it as it is, but what if there were to be a problem near the valve that's closest to the field, how do they shut that water off? There is going to, it will be, that valve will be directly above lane 8 of the track by the visitors' bleachers. There is going to be, lack of a better word, a cap. There'll be, okay, so there will be, because obviously the one that's in the it's open very, position all this time, see. you're not going to mess around with that. But if it were to have a leak, then you do have an above ground way to immediately stop. Well, the, the, the worst case scenario. Yeah. And which is what I, I want to make sure everybody understands. The worst case scenario, should that valve malfunction to some incredible degree, it would require cutting a piece of that track out at that location because accessing it from an angle would not allow compaction back down on that. Okay. Um, this is what came up once before, and we're back to that again, that what if it happens in the middle of the night on a Saturday night and no one is there, that this, this isn't an uh, alarmed area, it could just pour water out underneath the track, right? It not that something like that is not impossible. It, it, it well, is yeah, a scenario. It's a you know, worst case, but... Well, how would they approach doing something about that? Because that could cause a huge problem. So, just so you understand, and I'm based on what, what you were saying, uh, uh, Ms. Francis, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'll sit at the table and mark. <laughs> um, uh, 
the valve, if you have the main pipe, is, is what goes partially under the three holes. Right. The, the valve that the discussion about is, is, is a line that comes off of there. It's not the main, it's not the main pipe itself. It's, it's right. a, an extension that runs over to the high school. Aquarian has told us if we want to take that valve, which is right now close to the actual mm -hmm. big pipe, yes, yeah. and ship it out to say like the uh, driver, mm -hmm. uh, the, the access road. Mm -hmm. They believe we're asking for more trouble because we're putting two, where they're cutting splice would give us two locations yeah. where we've ever no, actually. I that. I the other that. alternative is to take the bend out of the main pipe, which would be two, it, it can only run one or two places under the current sidewalk or under the current driver, uh, roadway, mm -hmm. uh, either one of them. And it runs on the very north end of the field, approximately six to seven feet on the ground. As it traverses the back of the school property and comes close to the observatory, it's now running eight to nine feet on the ground. So the pipe just, it, it's very deep on the ground. It is a major project to straighten that pipe out and, and take that completely out of the equation. That's where we're, we were given estimates in the neighborhood of $100,000. at some point, mm -hmm. I mean, all pipes fail. I mean, at some point. At some time, I don't want to be here. I guess, but I just, I guess, I just was curious if anybody had thought of a contingency for that. You did, you know, you said there'll be a, a shut off above the ground. There's, so. there, there's a shut off. That, that should, well, that valve's always going to stay open. Uh, it's never going to get closed. Um, if they want to shut down the water, let's say going to the school, they'll shut it down on the street. Right. So they're not going to touch that. And they're not going to touch it. They, uh, Corian has never touched that valve. They don't. And and a baseline. It, it, you know what, uh, Ms. Francis, it's a risk benefit analysis. No, I got you. It's, I was it, curious. And it's yeah, been so discussed much. at length. Okay. I mean, we technically do we have a hundred thousand left in, in what we have? Yes. Do we think it's a wise investment to move that line for a hundred thousand? No. I don't think. Well, okay. it's our opinion. Well, that it's you. not worth that. I just, it was the biggest discussion of all, I think, that we had that it was it really never got, you know, resolved. So that's, I just, I don't know. What would, you know, suspect of why the one valve pop is we we're running some very big machinery and heavy, heavy equipment over that and where that, that valve right. went. Plus, they, 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 when they were digging on the north end, they hit. Lack of burrow or small water line. Yes, that nobody knew. Yes, right. It wasn't yeah. even okay. the system. Okay. Now, the, ups, the upside um, is that um, it's in the contract with HI Stone that every single piece of conduit line and anything that runs under either one of those fields or across the whole back of that school will now be on a blueprint that will be given, turned over to the town. Mm -hmm. You will know where everything is back there. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Bear. I think I know where uh, uh, Ms. Francis was going. But the question is, if that valve fails, can you shut it down quickly? Yes. There without, is. without losing 100,000 gallons of water within and 15 minutes and, mm -hmm. and a track. There are. Can, can you shut down that valve quickly? Is the minute someone knows there's a little bit of water coming out, there are valves on the, on the north side and the south okay. side that can shut okay. that down. That, now, I think that's the question, though. Right. The next that's issue is can you shut that down quickly? Yes. The, okay. Yes. Okay. Now, if it you know, starts at 2 o'clock in the morning yeah. on a Sunday, nobody goes by to school, man, you're going to have some water there. Is there no, well, no chance I'm, to have I'm an alarm on it? Like an alarm of some sort that tells you that it's leaking or. Don't they have some sort of? No, that's what I wondered. I don't know. But I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, some type pressure of, drops. You know. Yeah, like. I imagine Aquarian would kind of notice if if there was some kind of monitoring on it. You know that. I, you know, it's, it's, it's outside. <laughs> it's before the meter for the school, uh -huh. so it but it's, but probably would be, be caught right away. It's it's on some meter somewhere. Mm -hmm. Some meter somewhere. I'm not sure how accurate. Or whether they, they monitor that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Mr. Chamberlain. We have um, the school system and water pressure drops like a lot. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
We, we baseline air alarm system, it will send off some type of signal. I feel better. So I would imagine if that water is pouring out of ground instead of going into the school mm -hmm. and there's not a, a oh, yeah. positive pressure. But I, we will ask the question. Yeah, that's a good, reasonable uh, question. I would just share the concerns uh, of the, the councilwoman and the, the councilman uh, regarding uh, the issues regarding the, the water main. I'm not sure that uh, I would have reached the same conclusion as to the cost benefit analysis that the turf committee did. When I look at a project that is just south of $4 million, uh, $100,000 spent to maintain the integrity of that $4 million project does not seem an outrageous amount, particularly since there is some law in nature that says if the water main is going to break, it will be on a holiday at night um, when nobody is around and nobody is monitoring anything and you can't reach the people at uh, the water company. So uh, I would just like to indicate uh, my questioning of the, the judgment of omitting this. I think in the big scheme of this project, it is a relatively modest expenditure. Granted that it wasn't factored in time-wise or cost-wise, but I think the cost factor is relatively, to the extent one can call 100,000, insignificant, but I, on a $4 million project, when the work of the $4 million project is imperiled by trying to save $100,000, under other circumstances, I don't think we would do it. And to some degree, I think I would wonder how much of this is intended to save $100,000 and how much of it is intended to make a deadline so that we can have the field open and running and played on on a, a certain given date. And I question whether the, the wisdom of uh, taking those measures to, to meet a deadline uh, or a budget is uh, worth a trade-off. Uh, can I respond, Mr. Chamberlain? Of course. Uh, and it, it may clarify us uh, a few things on that issue. Um, it, I, no question that this committee uh, discussed this back and forth, uh, we, and, and we did bring it to the mayor. Um, and we consulted with Aquarian Officer, who, who controls and owns all of that. Um, the, the water line can be moved at any time and have no bearing whatsoever on this project. It's not, it, it has no effect. It's not a factor on our deadline of June, uh, the end of June, or whatever, either the third or third first, let's say June. And the reason being, should should that line uh, be decided the line were to be straightened out, literally it comes into into the field there to be, as we've all seen, they would want they would just straighten it and pick it up at the very north entrance of the school and run in a straight line, approximately 600 feet down toward about where the observatory is. Um, if they were to do that, they would close the, 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 the main for a short period of time. They would literally install the pipe, a new pump, straight pipe, and then where the connectors would be at the north end and south end, they would shut their water main down, and in one day, connect the north, connect the south, turn it back on, and they would then abandon the line that runs through that area, and then by abandoning it, they would pour concrete down length of the pipe and turn it into a solid structure. Mm -hmm. So the entire project can be done with never uh, addressing the surface above the line, unless there was obviously a break. And, and but what we've seen it, 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 the water leak here was not on the water main itself. That, that, that's a massive. That's a very long. No, on the line runs the, the length of the route seven all the way down in Brookfield. Um, it's a major water line. Uh, it, listen, there's a possibility that it could break in the middle of the night. The, other, the, the issue there is if, if it were to uh, leak, it would be at one of the valves, and wherever one of those valves are along that line, you're going to see water bubble up in that location. It's, it wouldn't take out two fields. That's, that, that's probably a thousand feet of, of distance across the back of those areas. Um, it's not going to take out everything in that area. It could it do damage to a portion, yes. 
I appreciate the, the clarification on the, the timeline issue. Um, I, I would still question the, the wisdom of saving $100,000 uh, because I certainly know that if the time came to, to come back and fix it, we would still have the $100,000 and I'm sure there would be at least another $100,000 bill on top of that for repair of existing if, facilities. If we damage, if we meaning the town of Milford damage that line somewhere in a process, we'd be responsible. If that line breaks, it's on Aquarium and they're responsible for doing the repair work. They wouldn't, you know, there's been questions. Would they be responsible for the surface above it with a new field on there? I, for what I do for a living, I could argue on their half, behalf easily and say, no, they're not responsible for fancy stuff on top of their line. They, they would have to repair a road or a sidewalk or, or, or someone's front lawn if, if it popped well, up to the point that you own the line. But would they be responsible for a beautiful track or for a turf? Probably not. I could easily see any attorney making that argument. So, so certainly the possibility exists that we would have $100,000 to then move the water line, whatever it costs to fix the field, and five years of litigation. There's, there's, there's it's scenarios we can work in across the board, but you know, uh, it's not been our position. However, uh, we're we're working hard. We're at the tail end of this. We don't anticipate seeing uh, much more in the way of changes because everything that pretty much needs to be done, or we're, we we've come across, is done. We're literally we're in the home stretch here, um, so we're not anticipating a lot. Uh, we're, so, given the fact that we're just earning that three point seven million. You're looking at three hundred thousand dollars worth of what we were allocated over four million, um, and it can be done at any time after this project is done. Uh, but I leave that to uh, other individuals. Okay. Yes. You said the track is weather contingent. If can the students play on the field area without the track being completed, considering most fall sports start in the summer, or do pre summer workouts? I what I would. The H.I. Stone technically is responsible for that area inside the fence construction zone. I would doubt that they would turn the project over to us if they have not completed that track. Uh, so it, I, we would run into uh, some very technical issues because we'd have to cross over that area to get onto the main field. We wouldn't have to do that with the practice field. but. For the moment, everything within the construction fence is completely controlled by H.I. Stone. I doubt they would turn it over to us unless they've completed the project. Do you know if there's been any conversation with the athletic department of what coaches would do? I mean, I know we're using different fields at this point, but what coaches would do to be able to start their summer workouts on other separate fields? Something pretty drastic would have to happen for them not okay. to get this in by. We have also, the athletic director has been almost, he's been at almost every one of our, our uh, subcommittee meetings. He has been kept. Just the, the athletic program at the high school, the students are, cannot begin practice until roughly the 7th of August. Oh. Anyways, so, so it is definitely, yeah, no. Unless it's a Noah's Ark type of event that over the next couple of months. <laughs> No, H.I. Stone goes into a penalty phase if the project's not finished on time. Uh, H.I. Stone's going to do it when possible, get it done on time and properly. Otherwise, they enter into the penalty clause and it gets very expensive uh, per day that they're not finished. Excellent. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Baer. I, 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 I don't mean to chuckle, but I, I love the comment about Noah's Ark because I was just thinking the ancient Romans used to flood the Colosseum so they could have sea battles. Hmm. So here, here, well, if okay. the field is flooded, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll have to develop some new sports. I, 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 we'll get the skulls out there. And yeah. Throw. Uh, 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 okay, I, All I, right. Thank you. Can't wait to see it. Done. Uh, we're all looking forward to it. And officially, you're starting to notice yeah. the Absolutely. end result. So uh, I'll entertain a motion. You want me to break this out into you know separate? Does it make sense to break it out into the separate amounts? Sure. So the ADA sidewalk work for forty three thousand four hundred ninety six thousand seventy six cents that the Board of Ed is expected to pay for. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. The LED 16-foot height pedestrian light poles at $28,252.83. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, the additional track pavement depth at $16,857.20. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And the common fill at Northfield for $16,483.20. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I have the change orders signed by uh, the CSC group in my hand. Would you like me to give them Sure, you can give them to Robin. Assistance. I'll take a look at them tomorrow. Thank, Thank you very much, everyone. The backup yes. information is not attached to the change orders. If you need that, the final version, I'll attach everything before I get the uh, originals back. Sure. Uh, so take a look. And if you're uncomfortable signing them just the way they are now, We'll take a look at it. Thank you very much. Have Excellent. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. And before we adjourn, I did forget to say one thing. If, if nobody minds me going back to, to Mayor's comments just for a second, I did want to note the passing of George Jake Sullivan. Um, he was born August 6, 1920. He passed May 4, 2016. He was born and raised in New Milford. He was a dairy farmer on Great Brook Farm on Park Lane Road, now called Sullivan Farm. Mm -hmm which the town purchased in 1997. And uh, Jake served as the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the town from 1970 to 1976. He was a lifelong farmer. He served in numerous positions with agricultural boards, including chairman of the Litchfield County Dairy Committee, chairman of the Litchfield County Agricultural Stabilization and Conservation Service, secretary and treasurer of the Litchfield County Dairy Herd Improvement Association, and treasurer of the Litchfield County Artificial Breeders Association. I want to extend my condolences, but also congratulations to a man who lived a life worth living and um, contributed to his community and um, certainly passed on an amazing tradition uh, in Sullivan Farm that we continue to honor and continue today. So uh, on behalf of the town and the board, I'd just like to say that uh, to his family uh, and in his memory. Yeah. So. Very, Very good. So uh, now I guess we could entertain a motion, motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.